that was Notturno or Nocturne by Clara Schumann. Uh, and Nocturne is a nighttime piece, um, and for me that music is full of the tenderness and secrecy and mystery of the night. It's passionate music as well in places, and it always feels as though it needs um, an incredible starry sky overhead and the crispness and possibility um, of that scene. It's amazing how music can transport you in that way to a completely different place. Um, and so I hope you enjoyed taking a few minutes out of your day to escape from all of the things that are in your head um, and put yourself in a different place. Clara Schumann, who wrote that, was one of the great musicians of the 19th century. Um, she was an incredible pianist and toured Europe throughout her, her long life um, playing concerts. She played more than 1300 concerts uh, of solo music in her life and the same number again um, with other musicians. She came to England many times. Um, but composition always ended up being a bit sidelined. As a child, she was an incredibly talented pianist and her very pushy father uh, made sure that she was destined for greatness and sort of paraded her around Europe as this uh, talented youngster. Um, and she then married Robert Schumann, who was one of the um, up and coming composers of the time. Uh, they'd been in love really right through her teens, um, but for many years her father had not allowed them to marry. He didn't think Robert was appropriate um, marriage material. Uh, but when Clara was 21 they did marry, and although they had shared this incredible love of music and they were always turning to each other for advice on their new music and their performance, um, it was actually always Robert's career that had to take precedence. That was just how it was at the time. Um, Clara also had her hands very full with bringing up their seven children um, and she did continue playing but composing wasn't an option and even her playing sometimes was um, pushed aside. Robert um, was a very temperamental character um, and felt that he couldn't compose if she was playing the piano in the next room so her creativity in many ways was silenced which is extraordinary to think, particularly given that it was her incredible musicianship that Robert really had fallen in love with. Robert um, suffered from a complicated mix of mental health issues which today would be well understood but at that time really weren't and certainly couldn't be treated and that was also a complicated um, draining element in Clara's life. It took a lot of her energy and time to support him through that at a time, as I say, when it was so little understood. Um, so really her composing, there was no space, time or headspace or energy um, for her composing at that time. She outlived him by some stretch um, and at that point she became the sole breadwinner um, to look, support their family uh, and her means of doing that of course was to play all of these concerts and so again composing wasn't the priority but thank goodness she did write the pieces um, that we do have because they are wonderful and if you enjoyed that look up other music by her she wrote some beautiful violin romances um, she wrote some wonderful songs there's lots to enjoy I should introduce myself. My name is Libby Burgess and I am also a pianist. Um, I, in normal times, when it's not restricted by COVID, um, I spend my time traveling around, playing concerts in different places, a lot of them with other people. So much of what I do is collaborative. I accompany singers or I play chamber music with instrumentalists, um, make recordings, do broadcasts on the radio, that kind of thing. Um, and I suppose part of what I love about my career is that it is very varied and that each week brings different work in different places with different people. Um, and for me, that's been something that I've missed so much in the last year. And particularly I've missed that incredible atmosphere that you get in live music making when everyone is sharing in, in the music together. So it's lovely to be able to play um, for you all this way today, even though it, it is slightly different and restricted by my home technology and the fact that my piano needs tuning and all of that. It's still lovely to be able to share this music with you. I'm going to play one more piece um, to send you off uh, into your day, uh, again by a woman. Um, Traditionally, I think women's music has been rather left out of our telling of music history, but thankfully that is changing. There's been so much more attention placed on redressing the gender balance in music um, in recent years. And so that's put the composers such as these two under the spotlight in lots of ways and very deservedly. Um, this final piece is by Amy Beach. Uh, she was American. She was born about 50 years after Clara Schumann in the 1860s. 
Um, just checking my maths, yeah, that is right. Um, she was actually relatively well recognised in her lifetime as a composer. She was the first American woman to have a symphony published, which was a really big deal. Where women did compose, it had often been in smaller pieces that were more appropriate for the domestic context that people might play at home. So to be recognised by having a whole orchestral symphony published was a, a, a really big reflection on her skill as a composer. I think she had to be even better than many men to reach the same uh, level of recognition at that time. Thankfully, things are changing now. Um, this piece by Amy Beach is called Dreaming. It was written when she was in her 20s, so quite soon after she had got married. She married when she was 18. Uh, again, she'd been a very talented pianist as a child. Um, but if she had had that level of skill and had been a man at that time, probably she would have been sent from America to Europe to study, where there was a real culture and tradition of um, high level music study. But of course, as a woman, that wasn't available to her. So she had to take matters into her own hands and um, develop her skill and her craft um, through private study instead. She had to do the work and she read everything she could find. She studied all the music she could find. It's amazing to think that um, being denied the training that the men were given wasn't enough to put her off. She um, made up for that with all her own hard work and still managed to to achieve great things. Um, as I said, she, she married when she was 18, um, a, a doctor who was uh, some number of years older than her. I think he was older than her father. It was a big age gap. And he was supportive of her music, but felt that it should be kept to the home. So she was allowed to compose because she could do that from home, but she didn't perform very much from that time on. So this piece was written soon after that in her 20s. It's called Dreaming. Um, and she quotes at the beginning a line from the French poet Victor Hugo. She writes, Tu me parles du fond d'un rêve. You speak to me from the depth of a dream. <laughs> 